It is time now for today's Talk Back segment. Each day we post a question on Court TV's social media pages. We gather your comments and questions and respond on the show. Today we asked our viewers, you guys, the questions. What questions do you have? for the attorney for Jesse Smollett. Still with me to answer these questions is Tamara A. Walker, again, the attorney for Jesse. Our uh, first comment comes from Mandy. Uh, she says, but isn't jail likely the safest place for him at this time? Uh, Mandy makes a good point, Tamara. Uh, with all the threats going on, most of them seeming coming from without the jail, uh, isn't jail maybe the safest place for him? No. <laughs> in answer, no. I mean, that's what security is for. That's what, you know, fortresses are for. No, I, I totally disagree with that. Yeah, clearly someone who's never been in jail, right? So Absolutely. Our, our Absolutely. next comment comes from Jeff. Your client was given the opportunity to speak prior to sentencing and declined. I'm sure you advised him not to, but did you advise him not to speak after sentencing? Great question. Did you, in fact, advise him not to speak before sentencing? Well, you know, as Mr. Uche pointed out during the actual sentencing hearing, he was advised not to speak, and that was a blanket in advice not to speak. And I think he was just moved in the moment. Um, it was obviously, you know, even if some time were to be given, 150 days, five months. Um, I've never heard of it in 21 years, and it certainly struck him in a way that he was not expecting, that's for sure. Yes, yeah, certainly, I, I, I would agree with that. But as I contended earlier, you know, this case is a little different. And the reason I said that, I want to clarify, um, is that, in fact, okay. this, this particular case gripped the nation. And it gripped the nation at a time where this type of issue involving sexuality, racism, was all at the forefront of our minds regarding, you know, the Trump presidency, et cetera. We all know how that uh, went. And as a result, it just got it just got blown out of proportion. And I think that proportion hurt him not only going into trial, but also in the sentencing phase as well. Your thoughts on that? Well, you know, Michael, I'm so glad you asked me that. Here's the thing. This is something I take very seriously because, you know, Mr. Smollett is a famous person. But what if you or I or, you know, someone we know is charged in a case that becomes a publicity case that spirals out of control where your presumption of innocence is lost? That's what happened here. And I think that because for basically two and a half years, everyone was going around, well, he did it. I don't know why he did it, but he did it. Instead of considering another possibility, that's when it becomes dangerous, because that's when our constitutional rights erode. That's when we have to ask the question, you know, how blind is justice really, if it doesn't extend to all of us? Yeah, as I've always said, celebrity sometimes helps, but sometimes it hurts as well in the justice Absolutely. system. Our next comment comes from Brenda. Is anyone going to recommend that he gets the mental health help that he so desperately needs? Now, I'm not sure if he needs it at this time. That's not fair to say, but clearly in the motion, um, there was a suggestion that the situation he's in now could affect his mental health, correct? Well, that portion of the motion was aimed at how the protective custody would be carried out and the fact that if he was basically solitary all the time, you know, humans are social animals. We're not supposed to be isolated from people all the time. So that's what that portion was referring to. And, you know, it is, as I said, it's an ongoing process to make certain that his time in custody is going to be mentally healthy for him, all as right. mentally healthy as possible, you know. Absolutely. All right, our next comment comes from Eli, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to answer this because it's something that has come up a few times on social media. Uh, Eli asks, why would you represent a liar? Um, well, Eli, I would hope that in your life you're never charged with anything. But again, we live in one of the best countries in the world, in my opinion, the best country in terms of our constitutional protections. So just because you're charged with the crime doesn't mean that you've done anything. That's what zealous advocacy is all about. All right, Tamara, look, we're running out of time. I want to give you an opportunity. Any last words you want to leave our audience with? Again, I thank you so much uh, for coming on with us tonight. Truly appreciate it. Any sure. last words you want to leave out there with our audience? Well, you know, I, I just want everyone to evaluate the fact that, you know, we have some issues, some serious issues with criminal justice in this country. You know, when people who have, you know, admitted murderers can walk free, and then everyone is thinking that someone who's committed a low level, just above a misdemeanor offense deserves five months in jail. You know, we need to look at the sentencing disparities. 
Fair enough. All right, Tamara Walker, thank you again so much for being with me tonight. I truly appreciate it. I'm going to let you go now. Best of luck on all your motions. You can find her at DefendChicago.com. I'm Michael Ayala. It's been a pleasure being with you tonight. Coming up next in closing arguments, Vinnie Politan takes a look at the biggest moments from today's opening statements.